Well, happy sunshine, family. Welcome back. We left off at the end of page 34 on the grand jury transcript from Knoxville, Tennessee. This took place on July 18th, 2017. Parker Still, Parker Steele, we're not sure how to spell his name, but he's on the stand testifying about financial transactions that Randall Bean had made uh, earlier that month. And we left off when he's talking about this two-day time span from July 5th to July 7th and he's assigning a meaning to the timing of these transactions. And that tells me that Mr. Bean would know that this money is not rightfully his and has to be moved out of this account. That would be and then Cynthia Davidson cuts off Parker, says, basically immediately, question mark? And then he answer, immediately, yes, ma'am. That They are playing off of each other so much in this transcript. And then Cynthia is about to follow up, and so, and then a juror cuts her off. There are two different personal account numbers there from 3062 to 4026. Was this the accounts? Look at count two and see if that says 4026. And then Miss Davidson says it does. And the juror says, so he puts the $500,000 in one account and then the 900, and then Miss Davidson cuts the juror off. See, he puts the, if you notice the, yeah. And then the jurors continuing puts all the money in 3062 and then takes the money out of 4062 question mark and I'll just note that up here it was 3062 and 4026 so now we've got 4062 being maybe that was spoken out maybe that was just transposed uh, in speech and it's a mistake but I'm not sure we've got a lot of different numbers being thrown out here. Miss Davidson says, yeah, he must have transferred. And then she switches to a question. He had multiple accounts at USAA, didn't he? Question mark. Yes, ma'am. Then the juror says, well, then you need to add them to, you need to add the transfer from the 3062 account to the 4026 account, question mark. Miss Davidson says, well, they were within his own accounts, and so I didn't really see nobody because he had multiple accounts at USAA. And so when he's just transferring from one account to the other, and then the juror cuts her off. But I didn't know that he didn't have a half a million dollars in his 4026 account to start with. And, and that's as phrased as a question, so it must have had the inflection of a question. So let me reread that. But I don't know that he didn't have a half a million dollars in his 4026 account to start with. This is really more of a statement than a question. This juror is pointing out that the investigation that's brought before them is woefully incomplete. If he had a half a million dollars in his 4026 account to begin with, didn't use the money that he had attained through the other wire transfer, then that's a legitimate thing. That's the last one is a legitimate transfer. And then Parker still says, I'm not. And then Ms. Davidson says, again, I mean, I don't know how you could say. What does she say? I don't know how. You could to say that when it, you know, the money is gone, you know, the 500,000. And then a question by Miss Davidson. Did, is it your understanding that he had 500,000 in any account at USAA that was a valid $500,000? <laughs> a valid? <laughs> no, that's not my understanding. In fact, that's would be contrary to what USAA has has explained to us through their investigation. Uh, who? Who explained to them from USAA? 
what was going on here? How come he's not able to present this to the jury? How come the juror is calling them out on their bullshit? The juror replies, I understand that, what you're, sa what you're saying, but you know, unless you, unless you somehow show me that the money went from the 3602 account to the 4026 account, I don't know that. So uh, again, I think this is a, probably a misspeak uh, it should be 3062, but I don't know. I haven't seen any of the account numbers. All we're getting is these last four thrown out. Then this juror is saying, I don't see what you're trying to tell me. You're telling me that USAA has said all this, but you're not showing me any observations so I can verify that for myself and feel comfortable that you've done a complete investigation. So Mrs. Davidson says, well, you just had under oath testimony that he did not have $500,000. Wow. Wow. The juror says, I understand that what you're saying, but you know, unless you, unless you somehow show me that the money went from the 3602 account to the 4026 account, I don't know that. That is correct. This juror is on point. And then Ms. Davidson says, well, you just had under oath testimony that he did not have $500,000. From who? Parker Still, who doesn't have any supporting documentation that the juror is asking for. This testimony, just because you have testimony under oath, doesn't mean that it holds water, guys. That's why we came up with a word called perjury, which means that you gave testimony under oath that was not true. And then Parker says, and I have records. I'm happy to show I have records. I, I don't, I don't know, but I'll have to check that and see. But I mean, I do have. I brought USAA bank records with me and take a break. <laughs> and then Ms. Davidson, well, did USAA, well, they took all the money they could get from it in order to try to recapture this money. Did they not, question mark? Parker Still, again, these leading questions. That's my understanding that they reached out and grabbed that. <laughs> Oh my goodness, guys, I cannot see a defense attorney, a prosecuting attorney, a judge, an expert in identity theft, uh, got his legal training at JAG, served uh, as part of the chief legal counsels for Operation Enduring Freedom, a, a person and an FBI agent, a person like this, he doesn't testify like that. Uh-uh. And I can see... I have a transaction sheet in here I can, I can. I'm happy to pull it out and very simply and show everyone. It would be no problem, it's on the top. I'm happy to do that and put it on the board. Well, we can take a break here in a minute and we might, oh, that was from Cynthia. Well, we can take a break here in a minute and we might, sure, I'd be happy to. And then Cynthia is saying, and you know, just for future reference, I don't have to charge everything that I know is criminal. I just charge, you know, it's a prosecution decision. You just charge what you think is most relevant. How, how interesting. I mean, because I mean, as he testified to, there's actually a total of 31 CDs that he purchased that he, he wasn't able to cash any of those. So I didn't charge them. So are you following me? Not everything that is known is charged in this indictment. Wow. Wow. This has nothing to do, really, except with this case, except that it has to do with shaping the the prosecution's or the jury's perceptions. This is, I feel, gaslighting. 
look what look what good people we are. We know of over 31 counts that we could have charged him with, but we're only charging him with a limited number of counts. So not everything that is known is charged in this indictment. But you know what? Of the charges that they have, they can't even show evidence of a thorough investigation for those. And, and so she's basically saying, well, we know of a lot more and we didn't charge for those. But take a look at what they are charging for and what they are offering as evidence for what they did charge. It's garbage. I'm, I'm glad that they didn't charge these other 31. If this is the height of their evidence, the pinnacle of their attention to detail and investigation of this case, they shouldn't have charged any so far. We're just about halfway through this grand jury transcript and there is no meat to it for the prosecution's case. So the juror says, sure. So in regard to count number five, let's see. It went from account number 4026 to 4960, right? Again, Davidson is offering all the testimony. Parker's still saying, that's correct, yes ma'am. And is that 4026, was that a personal account at USAA that Bean had access to? That's my understanding, yes ma'am. Well, what can you show? Where are these documents you were talking about, about that you're gonna put up on the, on the board? And was that the money, excuse me, and was the money in that from the $500,000 CD? That is what has been relayed to me by USAA, yes ma'am. We need USAA here. All he's saying is, that's my understanding. He went and heard a story and he authored a perception based on that story. That's what his understanding is. And all he's up here testifying is, that's my understanding. Cynthia's offering all the testimony. This is horrible. This is garbage, guys. Next question. And so he transferred the money to Whitney Bank on the next day. Yes, ma'am. So with regard to the bank fraud, we've, we've pretty much laid that all out. And I think we've pretty much laid out all of the money laundering. And the money laundering was basically the count five, transferred to Whitney Bank for purchase of the motorhome. Yes, ma'am. You know, money laundering is when you cannot trace the source of money. They know where the ultimate source of this money is, so money laundering doesn't fit. I don't know why the prosecution, prosecuting attorney is using the term money laundering here. It doesn't fit this case when I look up the definition of money laundering. But yet, Cynthia is offering this testimony. Parker just putting his rubber stamp agreement. Yes, ma'am. Did the defendant, did the defendant Randall Keith Bean hold an account ending in the number 1135 at the Federal Reserve Bank? No, ma'am, he did not. Very interesting question. How did money get transferred out several times if he didn't? Did he obtain from others known and unknown to the grand jury a valid routing number in the Federal Reserve Bank ending in 1452. Yes, ma'am, that was what he used. And he used his mobile device to access his USAA account. Yes, ma'am, explained to me by USAA. Uh, again, Cynthia's offering all this testimony. Parker's just under oath saying, yes, ma'am, I'm the FBI agent. That's my understanding. That was provided to me by USAA. Never names anyone at USAA. This is horrible. We're more than halfway through now. And as we're talking about earlier, the vast majority of the CDs, and we were looking at that, this right before grand jury, there was 
31 CDs, but the vast majority of these were returned as invalids because there was no valid account number. Is that correct? Right. They were essentially reversed by USAA, ma'am. This is weird. They, they were never... This makes it sound like they were never funded because they didn't have a valid account number. But yet, this term reversed, and anybody who's an expert in any kind of financial crimes, even if you're just investigating financial crimes, you're going to know what reversed means. Reversed means that a transaction happened and it was undone. You can't have a transaction with a routing number, an account number, and a name through a wire transfer without there being an account number. A valid account number. But two CDs were funded by USAA Bank and liquidated by the defendant. Yes, ma'am. And he was able to take out the money, put the money in his own personal account before USAA could reserve the, reverse the transaction. It says reserve. I think it means reverse. This is probably a typo from the court reporter. Yes, ma'am. Again, it's only Cynthia offering testimony here. And again, Cynthia disguising a question as test or disguising testimony as a question. And as we're talking about, he did use these funds acquired from the CD to purchase, for his own personal benefit, the purchase of 217, I mean, I'm sorry, a 2017 Integra Corner, Cornerstone 45B, 45-foot diesel motorhome. Right. Yes, ma'am. And then Ms. Davidson, and let's take a five-minute break for him to look at the records. The witness. Uh, hold on. Well, we're going to cut this off here, guys. I love you lots. I got somebody at the door. I'm going to go check that. Uh, we'll be back more later.